You know that old saying, never judge a book by its cover? It's wrong. You're telling me the half-naked man on the cover of this book next to me is supposed to help against the elements? I don't think so. Nice try. The cover exists to be judged. It tells you something about the book. It puts food on an artist's table. That artist is depending on your judgment. They need it to live. Nah, just kidding. Everyone buys ebooks now and no one looks at covers. However, people do look at your character and they are judging. Your glamour is one big book cover that either says read me or oh no. Think about it. Have you ever seen a metallic gold pig suit and gone, now there's a man who means business? We take meaning from each other's glamours, and you want to put your best self forward. This is virtual dress up, and it has its own rules. In this video, we're going to go over some of the foundations of fashion. If you follow this advice, you'll get so many comments from strangers about your funky hats, you'll think you're playing Team Fortress. Surprise! This is my cool intro. So, people see the whole before the parts. This is an important rule in making any glamour. Any good glamour has a distinct and immediate vibe. When you're admiring someone's drip and limbs and you break your neck trying to sneakily examine them, you've already taken that in. You're only zooming in for the parts. Well-matched parts can help you appreciate a person's fine eye, but you'll never get a second chance to make a first impression. Someone said that. Usually, a core piece like the chest will determine the vibe. Once you've found it, you have to keep to that theme while bringing the rest together. Don't just rely on what the game tells you as a set. Take one particular piece, think about what elements attracted you to it, then get out there and shop for new things to add on and make it fresh. These Guardian nerds have determined that every unique set used in a glam doubles the factor of drip. Throw Yoshi's stupid tear sets back in his face and say, no, you strange green dinosaur man, I know what matches best. Oh, an example. Glad you asked. Let's look at what I'm wearing, the Paglalathan chest wrap of healing. It's based on the Amalja Beast Tribe, and it's showy with a ton of crazy ribbons and bands and cords. It's leathery with some silvery bits and even has a cool tattoo. Now, this might seem very specific, but if you cast your line through the waves of time, you'll find other sets with those same patterns. Heh, <laughs> got it. Anyway, look how well the Ravel Keeper sandals work with it, all because they draw from the same motifs, even though they're unrelated. They're like second cousins, twice removed. Family, but totally strangers. But why do they really work? What makes a motif a motif? Final Fantasy XIV has been out for a while. While there's no sign the game's stopping soon, it means there's been a lot of content. As there are only so many ways to make a pair of boots, there have inevitably been some recurring designs. Here's another example with a machinist outfit. The hat and the chest are from the same Alliance raid set, but I didn't like the rest of it, so I thought about what else I could do. I liked the bulkiness of the belt and the gas mask look of the hat, while the loose magazine and toolkit actually match the mandatory machinist lunchbox. The materials are all pretty loose and heavy looking, so I went off searching for bulky boots with silver. Then I found that the Scion Traveler's boots dyed well matched, so the rest was just slotting pieces into place. There's a certain anatomical balance to making a glam, spreading out colors and making sure they all work well together without looking like someone dumped the MS paint bucket on your character. I found I found blue pants that flowed well into the chest, then brown gloves to give the whole thing a nice color profile. The completed set has won me plenty of whispers. Consider what helped that decision making process. Color, texture, and aesthetic. Unique to any MMO I've played, FFX IV features a huge range of materials. Look at this collage. Even within the same armor class, you have different types of leathers and cloths and metals. Also, thanks to dyes, sometimes even distant matches work well together. Some materials take said dye better than others. Some materials interact with light more, and some simply have much more graphical detail. Getting similar textures together, or at least having them complement each other, hey, I like your leather, is a good way to bring unity to the set. Your full suit of plate could have a cloth headband, but you'd want similarly textured cloth elsewhere, say in a sash or some ribbons. A good theme gets you examined. A good composition gets you tells. Write a transition line here. In the real world, people wear expensive watches from reputable makers of chocolate in order to flex their social authority. In Eorzea, it is equally important that you don't look like any random ragamuffin. That's right, I'm talking about pain. Any old Tia can run to the market board and, using the ideas above, put together a set of mass-produced threads from Garlemald. It takes a real fashion freak to recognize the power of exclusivity. The grindier the grind, the drippier the drip. The real aim of virtual dress-up isn't simply to look good, it's to be good. While a trust system baby buys Drip, the artiste runs a dungeon 12 more times after the first run gives them everything except what they needed. Anytime you draft up a new glamour for yourself, there's a council of invisible GMs that judges your worthiness to wear it. You can't simply start with all the pieces. That isn't good enough. You need to bleed for the fashion, to run the same content over and over until the judges at last piteously surrender the final piece into your calloused and bloodied hands. Only then will you feel worthy.
The next time someone violates the social contract and continues talking to you after complimenting your glam, you can take satisfaction in shutting them down by telling them they will never own it. Fashion is pain. They should get used to it while they're sprouts. Now you understand a few of the underlying ideas behind drippy glamours. You will get better as you go, but remember, great artists steal. If you want some inspiration, prowl through a Yorzia collection and admire all the great screenshots on the front page. Sometimes, you might even see a decent glam. Though, quick reminder, many sets will look better or worse on different races. What's fitting on a male or raw is probably silly on a Lalafell. My favorite part of the Yorzia collection is brainjacking other people's hard work. When you have a cool piece but aren't sure what to do with it, why not see what others have already suffered for? You can see any set involving your chosen piece and scroll through until some ideas leap out at you. If that particular piece isn't working, but you like the look of it still, try Garland Tools. It'll show you every lookalike model in the game, including retextures, and where to get it. Lastly, if you're willing to make a pact with Zodiac, you can look into Anamnesis. Hopefully, these tips and tools will help you on your path to the stars. Just remember, Sprouts, if you aim for drip, the worst you can do is drown. Sprouts.